right, I'm just going to recover this um, existing seat cushion. It's important when you measure it to measure it really quite firmly because there's a little bit of stretch in the fabric and I've measured it uh, a little while ago and if you have a look here, the amount of stretch that's in that fabric. So I'm actually going to run it sideways and I've taken a centimetre off the length because there's a lot of stretch. So for me, I like to use a two and a half centimetre seam allowance all the way round. Or if you're talking the old feet and inches, that's one inch. And I just find it's a little easier to work with, particularly when you've got piping. So it's important to start off with a straight edge. So I'm just going to straighten this edge. And because it's a fabric that's highly um, textural and I can see the grain, I'm going to straighten it to the grain, not square to the table. Because I find that once um, it's cut and we sew it up, it does tend to go into the shape when it's pulled around. So, what to do. so it's up to you whether you want to use the selvage or not. It just depends on what the selvage is like. Um, I do like to cut my selvages off because sometimes they're just a touch loose or sometimes they're a a little tight so I find by getting rid of those selvages it sort of makes it a little bit easy. So my cushion, I'm actually going to cut uh, the cushion coming out this way but when I do the walls I'm going to cut the walls off the side and I'm going to run it as a continuous so I don't have too many joins in the, um, in the corners. So my corners where the zip is, I'll have joins in there, but at least it won't be so bulky. So I'm just cutting this at um, 113 centimetres. As I said, I've just taken a little bit off for that stretch. Now one trick to cutting straight if you cutting at quite a distance is if you can, with something like this, you can follow the grain or if you look where you're heading to rather than um, just sort of watch your scissors. And if you look where you're heading to, you're more likely to get a straight line. And you can just cut your first one out and then use your first one as a pattern and uh, sit it on top so that you've got one to follow or just again use the tape measure and cut that out as well. Obviously a good pair of scissors that's uh, nice and sharp helps especially when you've got a heavier weight fabric like this which is an upholstery fabric and uh, upholstery fabrics they're tested and they last far longer. What I also like to do you can see there's a difference between the right and the wrong side so I like to mark where my zip's going to go. I mark that just by putting a pin in one end so then I know it just always is. Sometimes we have patterns or sometimes there's a bit of pile in the fabric. So the pile goes a different way. So by keeping a pin in, at least I know where it is and I don't have to keep checking it all the time because it's, it's already there in place for me. Another little trick when you're using scissors, and particularly the larger scissors, a lot of people when they use scissors only use the points and they, they cut like this, little bits. Open up your scissors, use the whole blade. So you can cut it much quicker, but you also get a much straighter line. Nice, good, uh, big tape measures also 
useful and I like to use the metal ones because at least they're stiff. If you're using a cloth one, cloth ones do stretch and they move all over the place. But having a um, just a metal or builder's one, I find that it just sits there nicely. So there's my back and my front um, cut out. If I had a pattern, sometimes I would mark which is the best uh, side for the back or the front because sometimes there is a little difference in that. So now I'm going to cut my walls out. So my walls, again, I'm putting a two and a half centimetre seam allowance on each side. So I'm going to cut them at 14 centimetres. The straighter you cut these, the better you are because when you're sewing it and putting it together, it makes it so much easier. measured this fabric and it's a little bit longer than what I need but not all that much so I'm just going to cut right through to the end of the roll and I'll trim that back in a minute to the right length. of having uh, measurements on my table so I'm just going to lay it out and cut it to size using that. Now to get the size of the wall the zip is going along the whole of the long side of the back and this wall is going to be on both the, drop my paper, um, the wall is going to be on the two sides and the one so I've added my sides and my front together and that comes to, with my seam allowance, which I've added another five, comes to 201 centimetres. At this time, what I always do, I make sure that I've got um, my sizing. So I know that I've got a two and a half centimetre seam allowance, so I'll just put a pin in that. Then my sides are 44, so I'll put a pin in at 44. Same this side. And that should leave exactly what I need for the centre. Which it does. Beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip in and that's where it needs to, to bend around the corner. So I'll just put a little clip in about a centimetre and a half on those two pins so I know where my corners are. My two and a half centimetre seam allowance, I don't need to clip that because I know where that is. And I'll do the same on the other side. It makes it easy. If everything is marked, then it will all fit beautifully. So to mark this side, I'm just folding it over. I can see where my clip is, so I'll do exactly the same on the other side. Do the same here. Okay, so that's now ready to sew as well. So now I've got to cut out two lots of piping, uh, two strips and a little bit more, and also my zip. So my zip um, is 
zebra. The cut that I need to do for my zip is nine and a half centimetres wide. So I can cut that out of there. Actually, I might cut it out of this side here. Let's have a little measure. I'll cut it out of here so that I can get the longer strips for my piping. So I need two strips for each side. So what I've done is that the width of my border is nine centimetres. I've halved that, which is four and a half. I've added my five centimetre seam allowance, which is two and a half centimetres each side, and that gives me my nine and a half centimetres. So I'm going to cut both out at the same time here, cutting one at nine and a half and one at nineteen, so I don't have to keep going back and moving my tape measure and remeasuring. Some people find it easier to cut the second measurement first and then the next one is in half or you can just you know, cut to the measurement, it's up to you. Now for the piping, you have to calculate the measurement by measuring all the way around. So um, by doing that, I know that I've got to have two and a bit strips. So I like to cut my piping at six and a half centimetres. <coughs> I find that the six and a half allows for the little bit of take up that you get when you, um, when you wrap it around the piping cord. So it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but uh, you know, if, if you're somebody that's just learning, sometimes it's easier to have it smack on because then you know, folding it, you don't have to worry about the measurements when you do sewing. Just that as I'm sewing it. Sometimes it's easy to look at the wrong. I went to the opposite side of the six and did five and a half instead, but it's, it's not going to matter. Cushion. I don't usually overlock things because the, I find that the uh, thickness of um, the, the bulk of an upholstery fabric is just a little bit bulky and it's better just to leave it and they don't tend to fray too much. So now I've just got to set up and start sewing. Okay, so today I'm going to use my piping foot. I've chosen the one with the hole on the left hand side. Uh, sometimes you know, putting, putting it in on the right hand side for the zip is okay, but this one will do for my piping as well as my zip, so I'm choosing to use this one. I've also changed my thread to a heavier duty thread because I'm using it, it for a seat cushion. Um, people sitting on it, just the, the pressure 
uh, it's better off to have a heavier duty thread. So like the thread you buy for jeans is really good and if you can buy polyester rather than a cotton, uh, polyester thread is much stronger and also a heavier grade. So the lower the number, the heavier the grade. So because I've changed my thread, I'm just going to check my tensioning too to make sure it's okay. But I know that I'm going to have to change that. So if I don't change it, I'll just show you this here. The top stitch looks fine, but the bottom stitch is a little tight. So I'm going to loosen that off because it's a heavier thread. So that's a really lovely even, just tighten just a touch. It shouldn't bubble, but you don't want it too tight that it's going to pucker your work. Right, so I've got my continuous zip, which for a cushion that's this big, it's a good idea to get a continuous zip. If you can't get a continuous zip, then just get two long zips and start from one end, uh, go to the centre and then put the other one from the opposite end into the centre. Now I'm turning that under two and a half centimetres and I know what my measurement needs to be here. So I'm just keeping a little eye on that because it's much easier to do it as you go. I'm needing four and a half, so um, four and a half plus two and a half is seven. So I'm making sure that's seven. So reverse off at the end just to make sure that it's nice and firm. And again, if you just keep a little check on how much turning over, place the fabric in the centre of the zip, run your hand along it because then it will crease it a little bit. And then just put a nice even stitch along uh, where you need to go. And as you get more and more used to doing this sort of thing, you do become accustomed to the measurements that you don't have to measure quite as frequently, but I still like just to keep a check. The wall of a cushion is, if there's going to be a mistake that shows, that will be the most obvious part where it's going to show, so that needs to be the most accurate part that you do. it off, turn it around and go down the other side and do exactly the same. So I know that my measurement from here to here needs to be 14 centimetres so I can either measure my seven here or measure from side to side and make sure it's 14. And so I just cut it up to the other and just run, run along that too. Now it's important not to stretch it because if you stretch it then it's not going to meet properly at the other end and because these have been cut the same they should meet nicely at the other end. Just cut this off to get rid of my excess. Just a little bit easier to work with. And you may notice that when I hold it, I'm actually holding it with my left hand behind. I know a lot of home sewers tend to go like this. 
it's actually better to go on the outside. You're not uh, shading your light at all because quite often the domestic machines, the lights are under here. Um, and it's also a case of just a little bit of safety thing, and especially if you're right-handed, just gives you a little bit more control. So I've got that. I'm going to join my um, other part of the wall on. So I need to, I'll just pin it to show you, but um, I don't actually use the pins, but just to show you where it needs to go. So I need to stitch two and a half centimetres down and two and a half centimetres in. So that's where I'm starting at that point. Again, reverse it off, go through at two and a half centimetres and end it at two and a half centimetres from the other end. Because when you turn your corner, because it's not stitched to the end, it allows you to turn it. If not, you've got to clip it. Run your two sides together so you make sure that you keep the right sides together without twisting it. Put your right sides together and repeat that same process on here. So I've actually got a little mark on my machine here where my two and a half centimetres are. And a lot of people do have that on their sewing machines. So that's sort of a little bit of a helpful guide for doing something like this if you have. are done. My next process is going to be putting on the piping. I've actually, years ago I used to sew the piping onto the, the cushion, but I found by doing it the other way, by stitching the piping onto the wall, I can get a much neater, straighter finish. So I've just got to join my piping. Remember how I joined, had it, um, I had two and a bit pieces. So I'm going to start with my longest piece. Now I'm used to doing this, so I form it as I go. If you find that a little tricky, I would suggest that you, um, you know, make up your piping and then put it on after. So I usually start along the back somewhere, it doesn't really matter where because you're going to have another join in it anyway. So I'm using what is um, a piping, which is a lovely uh, covered cord, it's a uh, 3mm, but when you measure it, it actually measures a little bit more. So you see by putting my, all my raw edges together it comes out at my measurement. Now it's important not to stretch the fabric and not to stretch the piping, otherwise you'll get puckering and it doesn't fit properly. So just lay all your layers together and then stitch. When you come to your joins, it's important to open them out because um, you've got to go around the corner. So by going, opening them out, that's splitting them for going around that corner rather than have to trim it. You do have to trim your piping, but at least you're not trimming the rest of it. just noticed as I'm sewing this I'm not holding on to the piping cord as such I'm holding on to the edges of the fabric um, to help sort of balance it straight. There's lots of things I do automatically that I don't think about and that's obviously just one little one that I do. So again where my join of my piping is I'm opening that out 
so that it sits as flat as it possibly can. relatively thick I'm just going to cut away my piping out of my join and then I'm going to cut my um, seam allowance so where there's no piping right back to where the, the other layer is so you can see there that those match up I'm just going to fold that under like that cut that off to where the seam allowance is so if you have a look inside there's no piping cord where the join is but it will give it a smoother finish if there's not um, some extra cord in there. If you get extra cord in there, it tends to be quite bulky. Okay, now I've just got to repeat the same on the other side. So once again, join the piping strips. Starting with my longer strip. could start with that cord a little bit further back when you start but I just find it easier to have a little bit more for grip and then it allows me to sew a bit. If you cut it short then when you start and only sew a little bit it tends to slide out so I just find it a bit easier to do that and then cut it off later. So I'll just have a little bit less seam allowance on one side in this area.
if you wanted to take this out and stitch the join, you can do that, but sometimes it's sort of like a little bit of a hassle, because if you don't get the join correct to size, then you've got a bit too much fabric or it's a bit tight. So I just find it easier to, to do it the way that I'm doing it. So now it's um, just putting our front and our back on. For this you can use the same foot that you're using there or if your machine has a foot like this or sometimes it's just on one side, the groove, uh, you can sit it nicely in there. If I use my zipper foot I go around and do it once then I do a second row of stitching to tighten it but I find because this foot is particularly suitable for our um, uh, out the width of our piping cord, it sews beautifully and I don't need to do that extra tightening stitch. So the, the cord actually just runs down through that um, groove. Now I like to start on a corner, so I'll first of all I'll clip my piping. two and a half centimetres. I like to do a little bit of my first edge to start off with. Get to my corner, put the needle down into the corner and then turn it around the corner because you want a nice square corner on this. So if you have trouble getting your piping to sort of sit there, you can always get a screwdriver or a point of the scissors or something and push that back. I don't really need to do that here, but it's just a little trick if you need to. So if you're unsure, what you can also do is put a put some notches in your, your wall and also your long edge of your cushion so that you know that they all have to match to give you the correct size because you don't want to stretch one or, um, or gather in the other one. turn that back properly. So because I haven't turned that back properly, I've got to trim, clip that one, as well as that to turn around my corner. When you're coming down the shorter side it's, it's easy to make sure that you get it correct. Now when you're clipping you need to clip right down to very close to your stitching so that's all layers close to your stitching so that it bends nicely around the corner. So use your point of your scissors and if you can't quite get it because this is a thick fabric just use further in. Again, because it's all been cut to size and I've marked it out correctly, it all fits.
fabric. Sometimes you need to just cut your layers separately. recommend that you make sure your zips open at this stage so that you don't have to be um, hassling trying to get your zip undone and uh, if it's got a lock on it. undo this little bit. I've just, the top fabric has ridden down a little bit, so I've got just a touch of a pleat in it, so if I just redo that, I can get a much nicer finish. And if you've got any little mistakes, it's usually better to do them as you go, because if you leave it to the end and then you've got to unpick it, sometimes that's a harder, uh, harder job, whereas if you do it as you go, there's not much unpicking, you can get right into it, um, you haven't got anything finished, it's easier. Sometimes the thicker thread is a little bit trickier to thread, but uh, it's worth it in the end for your product. So just persevere and you'll get it. Maybe. I'm still, even though I'm using upholstery thread, I'm still using a size 12 needle in this. Um, I find that it's better, it pierces the fabric much better, but if you want to use a thicker uh, needle that's got a, thick, a bigger hole, you can do that as well. But I find sometimes with the thick fabric, the um, needle hits the thick fabric and it actually causes the needle to break a lot or the thread to break a lot because 
the needle straggles to go through the thread. Because it was right on my corner, I'm just going to go over that corner again, do that side, and then turn it back around the corner. So I'm not reversing off, but I'm overlapping my threads all the time. Because this is for a customer, I need to put a care label in. I'm not overlocking it, so I'm just going to put it in with my row of stitching here. Um, so that at least the customer knows how to clean the cushion. have a look here because I've used the foot that was my original stitch line this is my new stitch line so it's tightened my piping up nicely if I was using the zipper foot the one-sided foot on it after I did that row of stitching I'd go around again to, to tighten it because you can't get it in while you're joining it if you've just got a zipper foot but if you have a look on the front it's really nice and tight so all we've got to do now is turn it through and put it into the, um, put the cushion in the end and it's done. Okay, so now our cushion is finished. We've just got to put the inner in and uh, unfortunately there's no good tricks to doing it. It's just a, a case of um, folding it, shuffling it, putting it in. It's how you do it once it's all in that makes the difference to how it sits. So. First up, just get it in any way you can. And obviously, the bigger the cushion, the harder it is. And try it from both sides too. So this is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting the seam down inside the wall. So by putting the seam down inside the wall, it gives the cushion a much nicer look. The piping sits up and it all fits better. It's a smoother finish. So I'll do it that side. I'll go and do the zip edge after. 
and then it also gives you the opportunity to push the corner of the cushion actually into the corner too. Because sometimes the foam collapses a little bit in the corners. I do up the zip I just make sure that each side is uh, seams are facing into the wall as I'm doing it if it doesn't all go 100% you can sort of manipulate it a bit when it's done up but if you can get the basis of it done first it's a little easier If you're buying some foam, it's worth getting it cut um, professionally so that it's a nice square cut and also to give it a really nice finish, it's also a good idea to have the um, Dacron wrapping on it. And you can do that yourself if you bought some Dacron wrapping, wrap it around, just fold it like a present but cut away all your corners and then I, if I was doing it, I would hand stitch it up with blanket stitch just to hold it all onto the foam so that when you're putting it in it's not a loose bit. This one was a, um, a cushion that was already done and it had been glued on. careful not to get my threads in the zip because if the threads go in the zip it can uh, compromise the zip and make the zip a little bit weaker so that it comes undone. So just flat all the little threads or cut them off but as you can see one nice wall cushion 